uh, we're, we're at the last two uh, handouts. I'm going to go ahead and pass them out. Uh, forever, amen. Now, forever, amen. Yeah, so we're, we're reading the Lord's Prayer, and the last part of it says, forever, amen. So let me pass this out. I don't know if we'll finish this week. We're going to do forever, and then do amen after that, all right? So... Does she have a forever and amen? No, she doesn't. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? What about Brian? Brian, do not. Can't make any other things. Just a I don't have another one ready for whoever else shows up. All right. Praise the Lord. I got a lot out of studying the uh, Lord's Prayer and... Uh, I use it as an outline just to pray when I'm in my car. When you don't know what to pray for, start praying the Lord's Prayer mm -hmm. and just start worshiping the Father. That's how it begins. That's right. And at the very end of it, it's forever and amen. So we're going to learn about this. Amen. Okay, so... The, <laughs> amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the word forever in Greek, it's two different words. It's eis aeon, which means, eis means toward, into, continual, to the intent that, and then the word aeon, which means age, perpetuity of time, eternity, and world without end. So, we, we read about his power and his glory, right? Yeah. Now we're going to see that his power and glory is forever. Now we read about glory. Glory means praise and worship. A lot of people don't know that. But the word praise is, uh, glory is doxin, which means praise and honor. So let's go to our handout. And start with Hebrews 9.14. And what we do during our Sunday school is if you get, get it, read it if you want to. If you don't want to read it, you don't have to. <clears throat> Hebrews 9.14. Yeah, huh? Supposed to be. You didn't have it going last week. <laughs> it's, not over, it's going now. Do you want to get over here and check it? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, Hebrews 9.14 says... How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Okay. The, prior to that, we, they were talking about uh, the sacrifice of, blood, uh, of bulls and goats, and he was saying, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit? Now, I, use that, I, I put that word in there because... The word eternal and the word forever are the same word, okay? They're exactly the same word. So we have a forever spirit. He's always there with us. And what does he do? He purges our conscience from what? Dead works. Dead works. What are dead works? Things that are not... Uh, Things are not beneficial to the kingdom. Thank you. But they're still works. Still works. But they're dead. I think when, when people... I was going to say, anything that's not from the kingdom is dead. You think about it. A lot of people do works, good works, but they don't do them for God. They do them for themselves. Right. You have the motive or heart. The motive or somebody else. And it says here that the Holy Spirit, the eternal Spirit, will purge our conscience from these dead works. How many times have you felt guilty because you didn't do something? Yeah. <clears throat> A lot. You know? time. You didn't do something... But that's not what the Bible is telling you. You're supposed to be cleansed from that dead work. You know? Uh, so, uh, and it also says to serve a living God. So I like this. I like both things that say that he's an eternal spirit, but he's also living. He's, all right. So let's go to the next scripture. 1 Timothy 1.17. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.17. Anybody got it? All honor and glory to God forever and ever. He is the eternal King, the unseen one who never dies. He alone is God. Amen. Ain't that a great scripture? Mm -hmm. I like the version she's got too. Um, the King eternal. Immortal, invisible, and the only wise God. What that, I wish I had that other version in front of me. That's good. Okay. I got a different version. Yeah, what does yours say? To the king of all ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. A, we sing a song like that. 
2 Timothy 2.10. 2 Timothy 2.10. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Oh. Now what, would, what did we say glory was? Eternal. Now what is, what is glory? What is glory? It's praise, right? Praise. So we... Endure all things for Lex's sake that we may obtain the salvation which is in Christ with forever praise. Forever praise. I like that, forever praise. All right. All right. Old Testament, Deuteronomy 33, 27. Deuteronomy 33, 27. The eternal God is your refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. He will drive out your enemies before you, saying, destroy them. Amen. Hey. <clears throat> Mark he says, says oh yeah, go ahead. the eternal God is your dwelling place. Dwelling place. Now, the King James says refuge, which is kind of neat because we're, we're in the refuge church. Um, and everlasting arms. Everlasting. Mm -hmm. You ever notice how children love to be picked up by their fathers? Mm -hmm. Swung around the room. Mm -hmm. The everlasting arms of our father picks us up. All right. Isaiah 9 6. Isaiah. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen. Do y'all notice this pattern going on? We have a, a eternal spirit, we have an eternal king, we have eternal glory, we have an eternal God, now we have eternal Father. Okay. See the pattern? That, that when you start studying the Word, there's a pattern that shows up. And uh, Perry Stone, I know some of you guys like him, I like Perry Stone. Mm -hmm. He said he likes patterns, and I know this boy, he goes wild with patterns yeah. sometimes. Yeah, he sees more than I can see. <laughs> yeah. How about one of, the long time. one of the most famous ones, Psalms 91 and 2. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all the generations before the mountains were brought forth. Wherever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Amen. And uh, <coughs> our dwelling place is everlasting. And notice that psalm was who was written by? Yeah. Moses. You know that. Some people think Psalms was written by David. Psalms written by a whole lot of different people. Asaph and his sons and Moses and Solomon. Solomon, yep. How about Isaiah 40, 28? Isaiah 40, 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Amen. Have you not known and have you not heard? And I like the New Testament scriptures that say, how are they going to how are they going to know without the preacher Somebody being sent? Yeah. You know? Yep. How about Romans 16, 25 and 26? The Revelation. Now to him who is able to establish you in accordance with my gospel, the message I proclaim about Jesus Christ, in keeping with the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophet, prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all Gentiles might come to the obedience that comes from faith. Amen. So there is an everlasting God that has a has a has revealed a mystery to us. It's been kept secret since the world began. Does anybody know what that mystery is? Does anybody know what the mystery is, which was held secret before since the world began? Mystery of salvation. It is. 
It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the mystery. Because, you know, before Christ came, the Jews relied on a God that they couldn't see. And all the other people had gods that you could see. Hard to worship a God you can't see. We still have a God that we can't see. Yeah, that's true. Because we have to live by faith. But I'm just saying back then they didn't have the Holy Spirit, this eternal spirit that they're talking about to reveal the mystery to them. Right. They had prophets. Yeah. But we, we're, we're, we're fortunate in, our, in these days can we I, have. Can I read 27 with yes. that also? Sure. To the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. The only. That's going to be in our in our amens with us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's keep going. <clears throat> I'm, I'm going along. I, I want to make. I want to try to get these both these done. I don't know if we will. It don't matter. I don't want to be in too much of a hurry on anything. Okay, Hebrews 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. So who's the same? Jesus Christ. He doesn't change, right? Like I said, we're the ones who have to change. And we're not supposed to be ignorant. 2 Peter 3.8 2 Peter 3.8 But you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. That's right. Yeah, I like that. Don't forget. Don't be ignorant. I like verse 9, too. Okay, re re read it. The Lord isn't really being slow about His promise, as some people think. No, He is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but he wants everyone to repent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So many times we forget that part. Yeah. You know. Yeah. The reason that the Lord hasn't, you know, it's called that trumpet out there. He's having mercy, and I'm glad that he had mercy to wait for me. Me too. Yeah. I'm glad he has mercy, mercy every day for me. <laughs> Y'all turn the heater off. I don't know if he turned it on in here. Did, yeah, somebody did. It was on when we got here. Okay. The heat. Okay. Did Hebrews. Are you cold? Hebrews one eight. Cool. Okay. Hebrews one eight says, "But unto the Son He saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of Thy kingdom." Okay. His throne's forever. Yes, it is. Let's go to 1 Timothy 6, 15 and 16. You've got it going? Who's got 1 Timothy 6, 15 and 16? Which he will display at the proper time, he who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. Amen. Immortality dwelling in the light. I like that. Okay, how about Habakkuk 1.12? I like saying Habakkuk. I like Habakkuk too. I like saying it. I like saying it. <laughs> right, how do you say it? Because you say it funny. Habakkuk? No, like she's heat. calling me out. Habakkuk. 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 I've heard a man call it Habuku. Habuku. I don't know how he got that. Yeah, I don't know how Habuku. <laughs> Habakkuk. Habakkuk. He's turn to the mood of Habuku and everybody looked around. <laughs> <laughs> He's messing with us. See if we know. Uh -huh. what, what language? Is he okay, who's, who's got Habakkuk 1.12? Oh Lord, my God, my Holy One, you you who are eternal, surely you do not plan to wipe us out. Oh Lord, our rock, you have sent these Babylonians to connect, correct us, to punish us from our many sins. Just up to, just 12, right? Yeah, just 12. I like what you said. 
Because this one says, we shall not die. That one says, what did it say? You shall not die. Surely you do not plan to wipe us out. Yeah, I'm pretty, you don't plan Surely on wiping us out, God. Come on, Lord. Surely. Please, Lord, don't wipe us out, right? <laughs> God, right now, inhale. <laughs> okay. Wait till I go home. Genesis, Genesis 21, 33. Let's go to the Old Testament. Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. Yeah. Who called? That's Abraham, right? Abraham. Abraham was a friend of God. I learned that. Uh, I've learned it many times. But, but you think about it. He was the first one that knew there was an eternal God and not some stone. You know, God was the first one that revealed himself. One of the first persons, he's actually, you know, by faith, the man stepped out. Of course, he was the friend of God. There's only a handful of people in the Bible called the friend of God, too, when you start looking it up. Revelation 1, 17 and 18. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and now look. I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of the death and Hades. Amen. I like that too. Okay, so let's go to the last scripture on the uh, forever handout. Hebrews 7, 1 through 3. This Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being interpreted as the king of righteousness, and then after that was also the king of Salem, which is the king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Okay, so this guy's forever, right? Forever. Who is he? Melchizedek. Who do you think he was? Jesus. I think he was. I think I Jesus really walked this earth. Mm -hmm. yep. And I also think that's why there's false prophets like the Mormons. No, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. But, you know, saying really say that Jesus years. walked in South America. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like. A falsehood, you know. What I'm saying, if it did happen, I mean, you know, it was only revealed to the Mormons, I guess. Right? <laughs> <laughs> a soul like you. <laughs> but he is a, a priest continually, forever. Yeah, Abraham paid tithes to him. Yeah, he did. He yes, paid he a did. Tenth. That's the first time, and it was even established. The law was mentioned, yeah. Reduced, not the yeah, nobody law. had. I don't want to say nobody told him to. He knew to do it, but yeah. but it was it's also written the law to do it. It was after, right. it after was the slaughter of the kings too. See, that was that was the major high point in 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 the life of conquering of the of the surrounding countries. So then Jesus shows up as crowning king. You know, so it's going to happen again one day. Yeah. Yep. So everybody got their handouts for Amen. Amen. All right. Each one of these scriptures have something to do with amen, and we are going to conclude this whether we finish this or not because it's amen. Amen, amen. amen is, a, is a Greek and a Hebrew word and an English word, right? And amen means so be it. It means to be firm, sure, trustworthy, and it means it's the truth. So if you see amen or say amen, you're saying it's the truth. Or right? so be it. Or so be it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen, right? Okay, so let's let's go through these. First Chronicles sixteen thirty six. I like how many times that we find this in the Bible. This word. These aren't the only ones that's found. First Chronicles sixteen thirty six. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Then all the people said, Amen, and praised the Lord. Amen. So you're going to find most of these things that say Amen. Guess what? They're praise songs. Yeah. Amen. Right, let's go to Nehemiah 8.6 with lifting up of hands. Nehemiah 
8, verse 6. Then Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people chanted, Amen, Amen. As they lifted their hands, then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Amen. You know, when I was a young man, I was raised a Baptist. And the first thing that happened to me when I went into the Pentecostal church, all these people raising their hands. I was in a youth service. Looked over at the young lady I was with. I go, why are they raising their hands? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. And then after I started thinking about it, I had read all through the scriptures as a little kid about people raising their hands. We just never did it. It's throughout the Bible. It's throughout the Bible. Right here in the book of Nehemiah. They're, they're sitting there building a wall with, with, with the enemy coming and they're raising their hands praising the Lord. You know? That's some, something else, you know? Let's go to Psalms 40. Can I ask 40. you, how did that make you feel at first? Just because oh, how did it make me feel? At first, when, I mean... I had something supernatural happen to me that day. That same day. Okay. Uh, uh, the type of person I was, just for instance, I mean, I lived in an apartment with a bunch of pot smoking dope heads, and I was one too. But I'd go to church. Right. Okay. And I'm. Long story short, I ended up I ended up on a date with this girl, and she took me to church. Right. It wasn't her, but she also introduced me to her. Uh, <laughs> but when I when I went to that church service, we're all we're there praising and lifting their hands. And she says, she took me to the Bible. She didn't tell me it's some sort of praise thing. She just turned in her Bible to Psalms where it said, lift up your hands in the sanctuary, bless his holy name. And she just handed me the Bible. That's pretty neat. That was pretty cool. Yeah. You know why? Because God knew that that's what he would, should have got your attention. If she would have just told you that it says that in the Bible. I might not have. Yeah. You, you might not have. I was, I mean, a, I was an avid just, Bible reader even when I was a sinner. I was going to say, you, <laughs> you would have probably still searched for it, but not, it wouldn't have. But the supernatural thing that happened to me, though, I decided I'm going to raise my hands like everybody else in worship. And uh, somebody put their hand on my shoulder. Was, you know how people pray for you? And I'm lifting my hands. And I look back. There's nobody there. Praise Jesus. Ain't nobody. There. But somebody put their hand on my shoulder. You felt it. Oh, I've absolutely <laughs> felt it. It wasn't something that I did. Some brushed me or something like that. Because that's not something you would have expected. That was out of the yeah. norm for you. Right. I expected. You know. Right. And even in our Baptist church, we didn't lay hands on people. Right. We pray. We just pray for people. We didn't lay hands. And so here I'm. I'm getting a whole experience out of one service. You know. And then. Then I need her. You know. We get married two months later. <laughs> there you go. But that's the lifting up of hands. That was the first time that I had, was exposed to it. That was an amazing day, wasn't it? It was. It was an amazing time in my life where God was there. I mean, He's always is, but right. You know, guiding me as a young man who, who you know, just He does. He was there when you weren't. Yeah, exactly. Did you say he was there when you weren't? When I wasn't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to Psalms 41.13. Psalms 41.13. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting and to everlasting. Amen and amen. You see how the word forever and amen goes together almost everywhere you go in the Bible. Okay, Psalms 72, 18 and 19. Praise the Lord God, God of Israel, who alone does such wonderful things. Praise His glorious name forever. Let the whole earth be filled with His glory. Amen. So be it and so be it. I like the wondrous things. For some reason, I, the interpretation of amen, I like the so be it. So be it. I, I like I, the so be it too. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of makes it more of a point. Yeah. It I, does. I agree with you. It's more, yeah. Like, but yeah. I'm with you, James. It's kind of like it's got an exclamation point. It. it does. Let's go to Romans 11:33 through 36. Romans 11. What's the so be it? It's almost like you saying, I submit to that and agree with it. Yes. I'll not put that. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay them? For from him and through him and for him are all things. 
To him be the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I like that one too. I like the questions too. Who's going to teach God? How many how many people do you know that, that, that think they know more than God? Well, there's a lot. Definitely too many. I know a few. I know. I know a few. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm saying. And here it says, who's going to teach him? Yeah. You know, who's going to teach him? He made the atoms. He spoke yeah. it into existence. Yeah. So I'll be it. <laughs> so good. Yeah. You when I did this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> he put Job in check quick, didn't he? He did, he did. I think it's good that we think about that. That's the first book of the Bible, so it's like straight up, dude, don't even try because I already put that person in check. Yep. Putting you in check right back. <laughs> Alright, next scripture, 2 Corinthians 13, 14. Hello. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We had, so good. we had a preacher for many years. That's how he ended every one of his sermons. Yeah. Huh? Wow. May the grace of the Lord mm -hmm. Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. I've heard preachers that. that was the end of his sermon. You knew when his sermon was over. Yeah. Any final <laughs> words? That was it. That was it. Yeah. He never would say in closing. I'm about to close. <laughs> <laughs> I ask you. Because I don't really know. Do I do that? No. 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 No, you don't. I've had no, some pastors she's just, say, she's just over and done with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I'm going to change the subject here. Oh, amen. So be it. I like the end of I like it when pre preachers that have preached their sermon in their message. You know what I don't like is when another preacher comes up there and tries to preach after the preacher has already done it. Or even more. I don't mean to add anything, yeah. but and you're yeah. sitting there going, oh, but I am. Yeah. <laughs> either that or they, either that they keep going on because it was kind of a short message yeah. and they keep it's trying to read the clock out. and they say, yeah. I've still got yeah, 20 still got minutes. What's <laughs> filled in? Yeah. When yeah. God gets through, <laughs> leave, it, leave it alone. No. I, yes. I, also, I, also had one, I remember one time I was in I was in a Pentecostal church and I'm, I'm, I'm like I say I was a new Baptist boy and, and the Holy Ghost is moving we're singing everything's moving everything and then the pastor gets up there and says time to change the order of the service let's take oh, it yes. oh yes it's oh like, yes oh yes you know oh, yes. <laughs> or let us do something religious yeah take it out let's do something religious now now that God's here let's do something religious. <laughs> <laughs> now that the Spirit's moving and we've interrupted, mm -mm. let's take an offering. Uh, uh, okay, where do we leave off? Uh, 2 Timothy 4.18? Or is it 1 Timothy? Or did we do 1 Timothy? 1 Timothy is up next. Okay, let's do 1 Timothy 1.17. To the King of all ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. And ever. And ever. Forever and ever. And that's in the King James, right? Oh. Ah. All these great scriptures. Okay. What's the next one? 2 Timothy 4.18. Now we get to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 4.18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me into his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory and Forever and ever. Amen. 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 Okay, let's go to Hebrews 13, 20 through 21. Thirteen. Now God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I like that he makes you perfect in every good work to do his will. Yes. He makes you perfect. Mine says, equip you with everything good that you may do this his will. Right. He will equip you. Working in us that which is pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's go to 1 Peter 4.11. I think we're actually going to finish. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, 
so that all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I noticed something here in this verse. You, just, you notice it says here that we're supposed to speak as the oracles of God. And I have found in my relationship with God and, and, and watching others, some t some, sometimes people speak out of zeal mm -hmm. rather than from the oracles of God. Yeah. What are the oracles of God? That's this word. His yeah. word. That's this word right here. It's an oracle of God. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we got to be careful, even if we're, if we're zealous Christians. I remember one time I was in a uh, uh, hospital. My dad, was, my dad was dying, and there was another person there that they had a loved one that was dying. And uh, I had a, uh, there was a pastor there that was trying to lead those people to, to, to Jesus at that time. And I felt like it was so out of, un inappropriate to try to share... You know, you need to give your life over to God while this person's dying in the other room mm -hmm. that's your loved one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> do, that at the, do that at the service. Right, well, if he dies, yeah, that's when yeah. you need to hit him with yeah. that. You know? yeah. yeah. But I felt very uncomfortable in that, in that waiting room, <clears throat> being a Christian and, and seeing this person grieving and ignoring that, that man. You know? See, sometimes being a disciple or, or being a follower of Christ doesn't mean... Presenting the word, it means being present. Yeah. Right, right. Sometimes it just means just sitting there quietly with someone because you just don't know yeah. what to say. Sometimes I have a problem whenever you look, you're reading the Bible, and, and you know, this is starts in 10. But if you go back to uh, the first part of this sentence, and it, as, and it starts in 10 instead of 11. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as God's stu good stewards of God's ver varied grace. Mm -hmm. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to Him belong glory and do dominion forever and ever. Amen. But I, the reason why I said that is because sometimes when you read this, they, they, the scriptures are broke up. What is he actually talking about? Go to the beginning yeah. of that sentence and find out. Okay, let's go to 1 Peter 5, 10 and 11. The God of all grace who have called us unto eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish strength, settle you to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's keep going. 2 Peter 3.18. We got time. We do have time. Rather you miss. Keep her at the time. <laughs> right. You keep her at the time. All right, so I don't have to hurry. No. Okay. 2 Peter 3.18. Rather you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our glory to Him both now and forever. Amen. All right, we need to grow in grace. Amen. Yes, we do. Grow in grace. Okay, let's go to Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority of heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commandments I have given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even the end of age, even to the end of the age. The age. Amen. Question: Why doesn't people grow in grace? That's a good question. <laughs> Some they think... become hard. <laughs> they do. They do. They do. They have nobody to water them. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And when they do, they turn a deaf ear. Yeah. I was gonna say. You, sometimes you can water all day long and there's just some land that just won't accept it. There's some, it's just so hard and so clay. It just runs off. It just runs right, right off. You right, can, water running off a of duck back. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> you know, I used, to, I used to take personal. I was like, now I just so I was like, Lord, okay. You just do what you can do and go on. No, because we're obligated to just speak and, and, and go. That's, like, that's what it said. That we're, we're, we're required to share the oracles of God, not, not everything else that we might that's think. That's it. Right. You know? Mark 16, 19 through 20. 
That's another familiar scripture. After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven, and he sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere, and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. Amen. They didn't have amen in your version? No. Nope. They don't in mine either. That's nope. weird. Because the King James says they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word, and signs following. Amen. <laughs> I was looking for your amen, but I didn't I see it. There was no amen in my ear. Wow. Well, you know. We're dead. They, no, they take. Uh, King James ain't the ultimate. Version, I mean. <laughs> well, I don't know. You need to ask something. Yeah. <laughs> you did notice that I use it, but then again. <clears throat> but you have to be careful on offending them. <laughs> you can run them off if you don't agree with them. Oh. I mean, I couldn't believe somebody was arguing with me about Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit. Hello. <laughs> That's Hello. the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of in my life. <laughs> I've told you. I've told you. They've done it. They've written books on I, I like what I like what you said uh, about the Holy Spirit in Spanish. The Spirit of there is no Holy Ghost no, in, 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 it's, it's in Spanish. Because I've been condemned by it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're just trying to take Jesus out of the church. One more scripture, Jude 1, 24 through 25. Of That's course, there's only one Jude. <clears throat> now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling Amen. and to present you blameless Amen. before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. 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 All right. We might just say amen on that one. All yeah, right. I did. I bought it. I bought it. He bought me a new Bible. See, you got a new case too. Yeah. I was wondering. I go, I like that. That's a pretty Bible. There, you made it. It was supposed to have my name on it, but it didn't come. It didn't anymore. come with a name on it. I ordered it with a name on it. I can't. You know, if you take it to Mordell's, they'll do it for you like for five bucks. Yeah. They'll yeah, probably have to do that for you since it's a nice Bible. It's pretty. It is pretty. It's a women's Bible, too. They have all these women's commentaries in there. Ryan, Ryan gave me the, the Jesus Bible for Christmas. And it's like, I've, I've used it.